Okay, Year 10, uh, welcome back. This is uh, Lesson 9 for your Speaking Listening Unit. And um, so far, you should have uh, completely planned your topic out. You should have attempted to write uh, three different introductions and then chosen the, one, the best bits of those ones that you wanted to use and then written your first draft. And then um, as part of that, you should have looked at rhetorical uh, devices. And then once you'd written your first draft, um, last lesson, you should have gone back over it and annotated it for uh, paralinguistic or paralanguage techniques, which is all about, you know, using gesture and eye contact. So it's about the performance element of your speech. So uh, in today's lesson, you're going to look at uh, writing the ending of your speech and doing a little bit more work on making your speech um, uh, a little bit better so that you can score the highest marks you can. Um, so as usual, wherever you're doing your work, whether you're doing it in your English book or on a Word document, you need to put the dates and then the learning objective. How can I give my speech a powerful ending? Um, you're going to pause the video to do the different tasks. And then um, if you need to go and watch YouTube links, you just pause this video, go do the work and then come back and finish it uh, when you're ready. So. Your do now task today is to read your speech again. Now, you should have read it at the end of last lesson and timed it. Today, you're going to do that all over again. And this is part of the fact that you need to be really used to saying your speech out loud. You need to um, read it, time it, check your timings, get comfortable with it. Um, think about the fact that when you come to give your speech in school and it's assessed and you're graded for it, you need to be able to deliver it. Remember, you're not allowed to have your book in front of you and to read it out loud. If you read your speech as in, you know, this is my speech, I am talking about animal welfare, you won't get the grade that you need to get. And so in one of the future lessons, we're going to look at how you can break your speech down into uh, little palm cards so that you can have some cards ready as prompts. But there's no way that you're going to be able to write your whole speech on five of these cards. So you're going to have to know the content of your speech really, really well, which is why my recommendations from the beginning have all been around choosing something that you're personally interested in, choosing something that you're passionate about, choosing something you know stuff about already. So your do now task today is just all about getting used to your speech. So you're going to go through it again. Today, I want you to think about your timings. I want you to think about which bits of your speech are becoming familiar, which bits are you still, oh, you know, didn't quite remember that I'm about to say that and I want you to think about that really carefully as you are saying your speech again you're going to try using your gestures and all of the things that you came up with when we were looking at paralinguistics and you're going to time it and you're going to write your timing down in your English book because you need to get at a kind of steady average time of five minutes at the moment lots of your speeches will be longer than that which is fine because when you come to summarise it into bullet points, you won't be saying your speech word for word from what you've uh, written in your English book. And so if it's over five minutes now, then when you come to reduce it down and you're reading it just off palm cards or you're giving it just off the, what's the prompts that are on your palm cards, you're more likely to be around five minutes. So do now task. Go through your speech again, time it, write your timings down so that you've got, got a log of them. Pause the video, do that. As soon as you have done that, you can come back and get on with task one. OK, so uh, task one is looking at endings and you're going to watch this video by this American guy called Brian Tracy. Um, and so the video link will be wherever your teacher is sharing the links with you. If that's me, I'm sharing them on an email and also on a Word document for you in our Microsoft Teams um, section. And you're going to watch this video. It's not very long. It's just under four minutes long. And you're just going to write down in your English book. What are the four different ways that Brian suggests you could end your speech? And you're going to use two or three of them in your own speech ending. So this is task one. It shouldn't take you very long. Watch this video, 
write down what are the four ways that you could end your speech according to Brian Tracy. When you've done that, you can come on and get on with task two. OK, so task two is writing the ending of your speech and we haven't done that yet. So if you when you've been practicing your speech and you've been, you know, reading it out loud, you've now got about another 30 seconds that you're going to write. And that's a really good thing. So your speech ending needs to be about 30 seconds. It's going to be about uh, 80 to 100 words long. And the purpose of the ending and the purpose of doing it now um, after you've written everything else, after you've um, looked at paralinguistics, looked at rhetorical t techniques, after all of that is to make sure that you are really bringing your ideas together, that you've got that powerful ending. Think about how we looked at creating a really good hook. Now you need a powerful ending that's going to make your audience remember what you were talking about is going to bring all of your ideas together to a really neat conclusion It's going to reinforce your message and then what you want to do is have an impact on your audience this speech is designed to get them to think to change the way that they think to agree with you to act to uh, to know more so First thing I want you to do before we get on with writing the ending of your speech is go back to lesson five, which is where you wrote the mission statement for your speech. And so it was something along the lines of at the end of my speech, I want my audience to. And you'd written what you want your audience to do, to think, to know, to feel. So go and find that under lesson five. It was the do now task. And I want you to write that out again under the subheading task two for today because this then is an outline of the impact that you want to have on your speech so it is all about what you want your audience to think to feel to believe and if you're writing the ending of your speech then that is the purpose that do now task where you wrote your mission statement that's the purpose of the concluding section of your speech so pause the video now go and find the mission statement write it out in your English book under the subheading task two. When you've done that, come back and start the video again. OK, so you should have um, found identified your mission statement. And for each of you, it'll be really different things. Some of you, you will want um, your audience to feel something. You'll want them to feel sympathy, say, if you were talking about uh, rescued animals or some uh, tragedy that's happening you might want them to feel sympathy others of you will want your audience to feel motivated to do something to, to think something and so all of the purposes of the conclusion of your speech will be different and so as you write your concluding statements you're going to really need to make sure that you meet your own purpose and so you're going to use some of these things here and apply them to your message. So think about what the message of your speech is, what you want, your, what your mission statement was, what you wanted your audience to take away. All right, what are the key facts and information from your speech that underline this for your audience? OK, you could go back through your speech if you needed to and identify. You could highlight them maybe in a totally different colour from some of the other highlighting that we've done. You know, two or three pieces of key facts or information that connect uh, precisely to your message. Then I want you to think about how you'd write those up. And I want you to think about how you're going to indicate to the audience that you're reaching the conclusion. And so you could start with words like finally or to conclude so that you're indicating that you're drawing your threads together. Then you could think about how you're going to get your message across. Now we must. Every person should. And you think about that idea of using direct address where you bring the audience into what you think they should do or feel or believe. You want to make the speech personal to you using the word I so that it highlights the importance of this topic to you as a person. And then you want to think about some of the other rhetorical techniques that are ones that really embed ideas for your audience. So things like direct address, you, we, 
us, our. Things like emotive language. So where you're suggesting that people do things. So, um, you know, you, you wouldn't necessarily want to say, um, now is the time for us to eat more fruit and vegetables. Although that is a message, that's not a message that's going to stick with an audience. So you're going to want to think about how you can use emotive language, how you can use your, uh, your word choices really carefully to ensure that your closing statements stay in the mind of your audience. Okay, so you're going to write about 80 to 100 words to conclude your speech. You don't really want to introduce anything new. So what you're doing is you're drawing all the threads together and then providing your audience with the thing that you think they should now believe, the thing that you think that they should now feel, the thing that you think they should now do. And then that then is the end of your message where you know that you've met your mission statement. So pause this video, keep this screen on so that you can remind yourself of the four things that you need to do. Once you've written your 80 to 100 words, you could try saying them out loud, practice how they feel, make sure they meet your mission statement. And then you can come back and do the next task. OK, so you've written your concluding statement. The thing that you're going to do that's the final thing that you're doing for today's lesson is now to read your speech all the way through. And again, you're going to time yourself. But this time, as you do your speech, I want you to try looking up more than you look down. So the, the more you go through the text of your speech, the more familiar it will be. And the more familiar it becomes, the less you will need to rely on having the words in front of you. So this time, when you're reading and timing, instead of looking down at the page, you should be getting to the point where some of the things that are coming up or some of the things that you know you want to say are familiar and you can look up at your audience. And that's what we're aiming for, that you have got to the point where your speech and the content of this speech and the ideas in your speech and the way you want to express them become so familiar to you that you don't need the words on your page. And even when we really reduce them down to summarise them, uh, coming up on a on a palm card those are just there in case your nerves mean that you kind of stumble because there's no way that we can write the whole text of the speech out on these so you need to become really 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 familiar with it so the final thing that you're going to do today is read your speech all the way through including your new conclusion try looking up more than you look down and time it again see how much longer it is Make sure you've got that written in your book so that your teacher can or I can see all of those things when we get to doing these in the classroom. All right, that's it for today. Make sure that's it for today. Make sure you send your work in uh, to me. If I'm your teacher, then you're handing that in on Microsoft Teams. Uh, if you're if I'm not your teacher, then hand it in to whoever your teacher is.